This is my sophisticated camera holding up apparatus. Good morning, everybody. I want to speak about how a book wound up in the Bible. In the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy, and I'm not going to tell you where it is because I know what's in there. I'm not going to look it up. I just know that there were two criterion for something to wind up to become um, accepted as a book that was written in the Old Testament as a prophet. Moses spoke about, first of all, a prophet to come, and that was Jesus. But there were two things that made a book scriptural. The first criterion for becoming a scriptural book was that if a prophecy was made by a prophet, and the prophecy does not come to pass, in other words, the book, you know, somebody said something was going to happen and it never happened in the time frame that it happened. And of course, it didn't wind up in the Old Testament scriptures. But there was another criterion, a very important criterion, for something to wind up in the scriptures. And that was it was to agree with the Torah. It was to agree with Moses. So if something came to pass, if there was some spirit that could tell the future, and there were spirits that could tell the future, but it didn't agree with Moses, then the prophecy came from Satan or from an evil spirit. There was a woman who could tell the, uh, the future from, by an evil spirit. She was a medium, right? She could read your palm, read the stars, whatever it was. The apostles rebuked this woman and took the evil spirit away, and she no longer could make money as a, as a, a, because it was by an evil spirit that she could tell the future. So could there be books written by evil spirits? And how would we know the difference? And here is the criterion, I believe, for the New Testament. Let's take a look at what Moses said. Moses said that it had to agree with Moses. Well, Moses said that a prophet was going to come that was going to be just like Moses. In what way, though? Well, it was explained that the way that this prophet was going to be just like Moses it was, is that this prophet was going to stand between them and the holy mountain of the law, protecting them. Back in the Old Testament, when Moses was going up Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments, the Israelites came to the holy mountain for fear and saw with fear and trembling the holiness of God and shrunk back, especially because being sinful men, and we're like, no, we're afraid. Go before us, Moses. For, and so they, let, they wanted Moses to go between them and the law. And Moses brought them the Ten Commandments and gave them the sacrifices. And Moses said that a prophet like me is going to come and protect you from the terror of the law. Who was that prophet? The prophet to come was the Messiah, Jesus Christ. This prophet by his blood, removed the terror of the law. So now let's take a look at the New Testament and the particular New Testament canon of Scripture, the Bible we have today. Before the Bible we have today was put together, Paul spoke of this prophet to come. So it was spoken in the rest of the Gospels. It was spoken throughout the Scriptures that a prophet would come to remove the terror of the law. Now, the Jews lived by the law. They believed they were the Jewish, the, the, the chosen people, and that the, this chosen people lived by the law. And they did. But the law is the very thing that they needed to be protected from. And so this prophet had to remove the law. So when Paul said that this prophet removed the law, the terror of the law, and set us free to a new hope, this was, the, this was the prophet to come. This was the prophet that Moses spoke about. And any, any prophecy that, that brings the law back and puts us in, 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 back under the law, the terror of the law, has to be a false prophet. Fast forward to Paul when he was speaking to Timothy. First of all, everybody quotes... 
all scripture is God breathed because Paul said to Timothy, all scripture is God breathed and useful for uh, correction and righteousness and, and all of these good things. The problem is, is that it's a snippet. It's a snippet taken way out of context. First of all, the, that, pro, that scripture, okay, that note, that letter was not, um, was not written in the Bible. It was not pertaining to the canon of the Bible because the canon of the Bible had not been assembled yet. The church fathers, everybody who had to agree with scripture, okay, all of that stuff didn't happen to hundreds of years later. So this scripture was in a, in a letter written by Paul to Timothy. But what was the context of the letter? Paul had said to Timothy just before um, he wrote, All scripture is God breathed. He said, watch your doctrine. Why did he say this to Timothy? Because wolves were coming in and they were changing. They were trying to impose their Judaism and, their, and, and the law back on Christianity. Paul had been fighting with this. Paul had been fighting with, 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 with Jews that wanted to, wanted to go back to the law. And he wrote to Timothy, watch your doctrine because these Judaizers are going to come in and try to put you back under the law. Take away the cross of Jesus Christ. Okay? So that was the context of what was written. He was saying, look at the scriptures, the holy scriptures that Moses wrote. About what? About the coming Messiah. And do they agree with what these Judaizers were speaking about? Fast forward when the canon of this Bible started to come together. The church fathers obviously let these books go into the Bible and these things get inserted into the Bible that were from Judaizers. This was not the all scripture is God breathed, okay, that Timothy was talking about. Timothy would have looked over the book and he would have divided the word of God, correctly divided the word of God to make sure the Judaizers weren't writing things. But God had his purposes and his plans, I believe, that he let these things about Judaizers come into the scriptures so that you could see the contrast between the writings of Paul and John and the writings of the Judaizers. By the way, the book of James, I believe, was written by a Judaizer. As I read the book of Revelations, I'm seeing more and more, and I've known this for a long time, that it's from a very legal perspective. And it if I'm going to go by the criterion, what do I consider scripture and do what Timothy was supposed to do? Watch your doctrine and look at what all scripture meant. It meant it had to agree with Moses and the prophecies had to come to pass. Well, I find in Revelations that maybe some, re some things may come to pass, but if it doesn't agree with Moses, I don't agree with it. And I, say, I see this in the book of James, and I see that there may have been other insertions by, Judaism, by, by, by Judaizers. That's what I see, and that's what I'm trying to give. And I know that a lot of people are, are resistant to it, but I'm giving you the absolute word, the truth. Thank you. Bye.